Happy Friday everyone and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security tips along the way. As always, I'm your host and security nerd Corey Nockreiner and this is the episode for the week beginning June 10th, 2013. I just got back from Gartner's Risk and Security Summit, so I'm going to make this episode quick and cover only three security stories. We'll start with this week's software updates. We'll also cover a new, very advanced piece of Android malware. And finally, we'll talk about the big story of the week, which of course is NSA's PRISM snooping scandal. Let's start with software updates, which you can read all about on WatchGuard Security Center blog. This week was both Microsoft and Adobe's patch day, and while they both released patches, they had rather light patch days. Microsoft released five security bulletins fixing flaws in Internet Explorer, Windows, and Office products. Now, the Internet Explorer patch is the most important one. It fixes 19 of the 23 vulnerabilities. I recommend you go get it immediately, since I suspect attackers will target some of those flaws. However, don't forget the Office patch. It fixes a pretty critical vulnerability, which attackers can use with malicious Word or other Office documents, so go get those patches. Adobe also released only one update fixing a flaw in their popular Flash Player. In fact, they only fixed one flaw in Flash Player. That said, it's a critical flaw that can actually allow a remote website to execute code on your computer if you haven't patched. So if you use Flash Player, you might want to update that as well. Next up, I want to talk about a sophisticated new piece of Android malware, which uh, AV companies are calling Backdoor Android OS .opad. This was a piece of malware that was discovered by one of WatchGuard's security partners, Kaspersky, and they described the malware in a detailed blog post, which I recommend you check out. Long story short, this malware is rather advanced. Uh, it will arrive like other Android malware as part of an application you might download from the Google Play Market or some unsanctioned uh, Google Marketplace. In any case, once you download the malware, it uses some more advanced techniques to really hide on your Android device. Uh, for instance, it leverages a flaw in the Android OS to install itself with root or administrative privileges. Once it does that, it can leverage some tricks in the Android OS to hide on your system and make it so you really can't delete the malware without reflashing your firmware. It also uses a very encrypted command and control channel. It is essentially is a backdoor or a, a botnet trojan and it connects to a command and control channel so the attacker can execute further commands on your Android device. In any case to do this it uses a very encrypted technique to try to hide itself as long as possible. So these are techniques similar to normal PC malware. Now once it infects you it does a number of bad things. For instance to monetize it does something Android malware often does which is send premium SMS or text messages to make money for these bad guys. One other neat trick up this malware sleeve is it can also spread via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So long story short, I recommend you check out Kaspersky's blog post. This is a really advanced piece of Android malware. It's more like the PC malware we're used to seeing, so it's kind of a sign that mobile malware, specifically mobile Android malware, is maturing and becoming as advanced as some of the PC malware you're used to seeing on normal computers. So let's end with what is definitely the biggest story this week, which of course is the NSA snooping scandal using a tool they call PRISM. If you paid attention to the blog post with last week's video, you may have noticed in the extra section I had a story from Friday about certain telcos, specifically Verizon, sharing information with the NSA, specifically a lot of phone uh, number information and the amount of calls you make. Later in the week, we also heard a story from The Guardian about NSA gathering information from many of the biggest uh, web service providers on the Internet, people like Google, uh, Facebook, Skype, and many other uh, companies that make web services that store a ton of private information 
So the big news this week is the person that exposed all this information actually came out early this week. His name is Edward Snowden, and he used to work as a, a security expert for the organization Booz Allen Hamilton, who contracts for the NSA. And previous to that, he also worked for the CIA. So he released a, about an eight-minute video, which I recommend you watch. It's a very interesting video where he details some of the information about PRISM. And of course, PRISM is the code name uh, for information gathering uh, uh, software that the NSA has. When he released this information, he released a bunch of documents like a PowerPoint and a whole bunch of PDFs that, that come from the U.S. government detailing PRISM. And essentially, they have. Uh, it sounds like uh, the NSA has partnerships with Google, Facebook, book, uh, Skype, Microsoft, many different companies that might have some information the government is after. And they will occasionally, if the government asks for it, share this information with them so they can research and, and essentially find bad guys is what the government says. So what's the problem with this? We know that the government often can actually get court orders to get things like phone numbers, phone call information, and private information from, from private companies. But the big issue is it seems like the NSA has a deal where they can ask uh, some of these companies for information and get it without that much restriction, without a, a court order. Or at the very least, whatever steps they have to go through is not transparent. We really don't know how easy it is for them to get this information. At one point, some of the articles suggest that they actually have backdoor access to the servers at Google, Microsoft, and so on. Now, that said, all of these companies have since denied this. They say that the NSA or the government does not have backdoor access to the server. That said, they didn't say anything about if they would give out information if the government requested it. So in any case, this has caused a very, very big privacy hoopla. Uh, should the government have access to this information? Uh, of course, uh, this week Obama also came out and somewhat confirmed this program and said they're using it to go after terrorists. They say it's all legal, and yet the fact that they're so secretive about some of the legal changes that allowed them to start gathering this information is causing concern for a lot of people. So in any case, this is really, really a big story, and it sounds like Edward Snowden has more and more disclosure he plans on releasing over the next coming weeks. Uh, for instance, right now he, by the way, has traveled to Hong Kong to avoid U.S. extradition. And uh, during the week he also talked about information that the U.S. has been hacking China. We hear all these stories about China hacking the U.S. and, and our government being upset with that. But of course he says that the U.S. has been hacking China for years and years, since 2009. Uh, hacking government organizations, colleges, students, things like that. So it sounds like the cyber attack uh, thing may go both ways. It's hard to know who to believe right now, but I really recommend you check out this Edward Snowden interview and keep an eye on it. At the very least, I really hope this incident causes the U.S., my country, to come together as a democracy and decide whether or not this sort of uh, information gathering from the government should really be legal. On one hand, it should probably be okay for the government on a case-by-case uh, basis to get information from private companies about known criminals. You know, if they go through a due process, a process that shows that they're going after a known suspect. On the other hand, should we really uh, make it easy for the government to gather information about anyone, uh, people that may have not broken any sort of laws? So this is a huge story and I suspect it's going to be going on for months. I recommend you follow it and again, definitely check out the Edward Snowden video. So that's it for this really quick episode. I hope you found the story interesting. Do make sure to check out the reference section of the post associated with this video. There are some other stories that happened this week, including uh, the government warning about security vulnerabilities in medical devices, which kind of goes with one of the security predictions I made this year. So be sure to check out that reference section. Anyways, if you want to be up to date with all the InfoSec security news, I really highly recommend you check out the WatchGuard Security Center blog, where I have posts all the time. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. As always, thank you for watching and here at WatchGuard we're rooting for you.